After the VCR system, which was a bit unsophisticated, Philips decided to move to other directions. By that time, VCR LP arrived in the shops. The new format Video 2000 was ready. It was introduced in 1979 at Berlin Radio Show. The time is now. The company is Philips. And the system is the Video 2000. But the VCR logo has been kept for a while, even though it was a fundamentally new format. That doesn't make sense. The cassettes, been named after the well-known audio cassettes, Video Compact Cassette, but the system was named Video 2000. This was confusing, and it must have confused some potential buyers too, as Video 2000 never became really successful. Philips tried everything to push as much as possible onto the rental market. The biggest market share, 20%, was reached for a short period in the Netherlands, Germany and Switzerland. In the meantime, VHS and Betamax were on the market, so a third format would have had huge difficulties even if its technology had been a lot more advanced. The most innovative features were closed tape housing, dynamic track following, this will be explained later, noise reduction, go-to function, auto-rewind, numeric keypad for the programming and channel selection, direct drive, multiple motors for the reels, reusable write protect, double-sided cassettes. These features were included from the first machines. In 1980, the VR2020 came to the shops at the price of £650. The second and third generation also included the following features. Infrared remote, stereo sound, XL recording mode to extend the recording time to 16 hours. The best known feature of the Video 2000 is the double-sided cassettes that doubled the recording time on a single tape. Like the audio cassette, it recorded on the half of the tape, because there is no control track used that kept the video heads on the video tracks by pilot frequencies recorded with the video signal. During the playback, it reads these pilot frequencies with the video signal and checks the generated voltage and then it can move the video heads for accurate reading. This method is called the dynamic track following. The first models were already on the market when it was discovered that the Grundig built the audio heads 2.4 mm off to the Philips machines, so during the playback on each other's recorded tapes, the audio was out of sync. Both of them moved it 1.25 mm in factory, but the problem still existed in the early equipment. Philips and Grundig used two different mechanisms. The Grundig's was cheap and simple, the Philips is complicated and heavy. For the second and third generation, Philips fixed the issues with its mechanism, while Grundig stuck with relatively high fault percentage. The second and third generation size and weight were reduced too. Here are two models I can show you, both from 1983, second generation, and they should have remote control, but it was lost. They had a small service, and at that time, it was discovered that the 2340 has a battery which was leaked out to the clock panel, so that's why the display shows this mess. But after a while, it's fine. The auto tape tracking system was introduced in V2000. It is quite accurate. It shows the used time, remaining time, and also has a counter and displays under the cassette mechanism. The other display is for the clock and tuner. These functions exist in the 2333 too, but all information is on the same display and can be selected by the next button. How can the unit measure the tape length? On the cassette edge, six holes can be seen. These are connected to sensors, and when the cassette is loaded, it depends which sensors are pushed in to give the measurement to the electronics. The 2340 is linear stereo, that means the two audio tracks are continuous and recorded on the tape edge. The bilingual setting 
only plays channel 1 or 2. Both have audio DAF function when the audio is re-recorded and keeps the picture untouched. There is no hi-fi sound in video 2000, it did not survive long enough to add this feature. Here are the answer right. The slow motion, reverse playback and fast playback were unexpectedly good without noise bars. While I recorded this, some issues happened. For example, a weakness of the cassettes came up. The tape endpoints are glued to the reels, and a little metal piece on the tape edge should warn to slow down and stop the reels. But if that metal piece is not there, it doesn't stop and the tape can be ripped out from the reels. I received these tapes too and they looks like pre-recorded ones. In one box the cassette is a normal Grundig 2x4 hours one, but in the other box there was more of a true pre-recorded one. Sadly, both had been over-recorded, so no luck with them. And here is some footage from these tapes. des Bayerischen Rundfunks Kaspar R. Mayer und der Kameramann des Schweizer Fernsehens Mick Feuerstein haben sich zudem am Rheinfalz, im Jura, Berner Oberland und Wallis umgesehen. eigentlich gegeben, aber es ist dann doch immer spannend zu schauen, ob es auch so herausgekommen ist oder nicht. Er wirkt immer gleich jung. Seine alten Hits sind genauso beliebt wie seine neuesten Songs. Cliff Richards ist ein echter Profi im Showbusiness. Er beweist dies wieder einmal mehr in einem Konzert aus dem Hippodrom in London, das wir Ihnen nun zeigen. Bahnradspezialist Roland Königshofer hatten sich nach sechs Konkurrenzen an die zweite Stelle nach vorgeschoben. Links im Bild die weiterhin führenden Mercedes Sternitz und Nico Barack. Und was war hier zu tun? Man musste mit einem Putter einen Tennisball in einen Kübel hineingeben und, äh, oder schupfen und der Partner die Partnerin weiterführen bis zu einem Kartenhaus, das noch nicht fertig geklebt war. Und jetzt ging es ums Kleben, wer das Geschickte macht und dann so fest alles zusammenklebt, dass man den Tisch damit in die Höhe heben kann. Und dabei hat der Roland Königshofer eine Technik entwickelt, die dann schließlich... The top range model was the 2840, which is the same as 2340, but with added XL mode. Also, I found information about the 2870 version, which would be the 2840 with added PCM sound, but more likely it never came to the market. From 1984, it started to be more and more obvious, the VHS had won, and the market for V2000 was shrinking, as V2000 never supported the NTSC system, and Europe was not big enough for 3 video format. From 1984, Philips started to sell VHS machines, alongside the video 2000. It was very similar outside, but inside there is a Matsushita mechanism. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.